Starting off our list today, we have the mystery of the color changing Alaskan rivers. In recent years, scientists have found themselves bewildered by the changes in their waterways, including the 451 kilometers. 280 miles of the monumental Kobuk River twists and turns through the northwest Alaska. Scrambling to figure out just what the heck is going on and why not only have these waters started to turn orange, but why they have also experienced an extreme increase in acidity, the United States Geological Survey partnered with the National Park Service and the University of California Davis and the University of Alaska Anchorage and Public Pacific University together have set out to map the extent of the contamination as well as its impact on the ecosystem and the cause of it all. While the large group of scientists found their work to be inconclusive, they did come up with a few good theories. The first being that rising temperatures in the Arctic, which has been warming at an alarming rate of almost four times faster than the rest of the world, has caused permafrost to begin to thaw in certain areas of the state, releasing iron that had previously been held within the ice. Another theory suggests that not only was the color change due to excess levels of iron, but also the presence of bacteria, reducing the oxidized iron into the soil, which upon contact with the oxygenated water, turned a vibrant shade of orange and raised acidity levels to rival those of actual orange juice. Next up we have vampire fish rain. It's like that song acid rain, but instead of acid rain it's vampire fish falling from the sky. Now if you're starting to think I've lost my mind, let me explain. The sea lamprey, commonly referred to as the vampire fish, has been around since at least the 1800s, which is when it was first discovered. The jawless fish, which can grow up to 15 inches long, earned its nickname due to the fact that its mouth, which is ringed with many rows of sharp teeth, works as a suction cup which allows it to attach and suck the blood of its prey along with other bodily fluids. So now that we know what they are, let's just imagine what would happen if they started falling from the sky in our lawns, roadways, parking lots, beaches, and more. Well, the people of Fairbanks, Alaska don't have to imagine, as in 2015, it actually happened. Over the span of about a week, the Alaskan Department of Fish and Game received several calls from the residents of the town claiming to have found the fish popping up in the most unlikely places. Now, some people have claimed this was due to seagulls scooping them up from the fresh waters and dropping them on land, but like there were a lot. And besides, vampire fish rain sounds way cooler anyways. Kushtaka is next on our list, also known as the Land Otter Man. The creature, which many locals claim to have seen, is said to be a mythical shape-shifting being that has commonly been referred to in the legends told by the Tinglet peoples of the Pacific Northwest Coast on North America. In some of the legends told, Kushtakas are described as monsters, cruel creatures who drag sailors to their deaths. However, other stories have depicted them as friendly and helping, with some even claiming that the creatures have often saved humans by freezing to death in the cold Alaskan climate. So it's a bit of a toss up on this one. Are they good or are they bad? And are they even real? I'll leave that up to you guys to figure out. Coming up next, we have the Slide Cemetery, located in the Klondike Gold Rush National Park. It was a dark day when scientists discovered the graves of an estimated 48 to 100 people, it's unknown as the records weren't so great back then, who perished in what is now described as the darkest day in the Klondike Gold Rush history. On April 3rd of 1898, many Alaska people took to the Chilkoot Trail in an effort to quickly reach the Klondike gold fields, but unfortunately, a large number of them never made it to the intended destination. It seems the deceased filled with dreams of collecting riches failed to heed the many warnings of weather concerns in the area, and as the aspiring gold collectors made their way up the steep trails, the wet spring weather and loose dirt and rock caused a 10 acre avalanche ending the lives of many and turning what was once a booming gold town into a desolate and melancholy area of mourning. The cemetery stands today as a reminder of this dark day in history. Up next, we have Lady of the Lake, the discovery of which left scientists and historians baffled and disturbed. So if you're picturing some ghostly woman standing at the edge of the water with decrepit skin and strangly hair, whose presence is depicted in horror stories and folklore, well, you'd be wrong. The Lady of the Lake is actually an abandoned WB-29 bomber aircraft, tail number 4462214. 
The aircraft, which flew in the 1940s during World War II, was used to detect evidence of nuclear testing from the Soviet Union while flying back and forth between Alaska and Japan makes sense, but what doesn't is how the aircraft ended up in the lake. Its first confirmed appearance in its final watery resting place was in 1964, but whether or not it crashed there, which it does not appear to have done so, or if it was placed there, there are absolutely no records, so it just really remains a mystery. Next we have the possible discovery of a supervolcano hiding just beneath the surface of the Alaskan islands. The question of the volcano's existence first arose on December 7th of 2022 when John Power, a geophysicist at the United States Geological Survey's Alaska Volcano Observatory presented a study that showcased a wide crater with arc shaped ridges and around a 426 foot depth, 130 meter hollow entryway, presumably the tip of the supervolcano, and he presented it to his peers at the American Geophysical Union. While the discovery has yet to be confirmed, there is a mountain of evidence to support the existence of the mega underwater volcano. Geographical data as well as data collection from seismometers used to record micro earthquakes around the islands point heavily to the confirmation of the volcano's presence. At this point in time, scientists are determined to confirm what exactly lies beneath the surface of these waters around the Alaskan islands as quickly as they can, because with the discovery of the possible volcano being so new, we have little to no information on whether or not this thing could blow at any time. And starting off our top three, we have disappearances in the Alaskan Triangle, which of course was briefly mentioned in our last point, but let's dive a little bit deeper because since 1988, there has actually been a recorded total of 16 thousand disappearances in the area that lies between the lines of Anchorage, Jeannot, and, and Uxquivik. Of course, Boggs and Bigich being among the missing. No one can figure out why this specific area has caused so much confusion and turmoil. Of course, there are many theories, the presence of the Dark Pyramid being one of them, rough terrain being another, and possible magnetic disturbances as well. But the crazy part is that it's not just planes that disappear when entering this particular triangle-shaped portion of Alaska. Reports of alleged kidnappings, getting lost in the woods, sudden vanishings, and being buried by snow are by in no means of short supply. Scientists still can't seem to figure out what it is about this specific area that makes planes and people act so out of whack. Next, we have the petroglyph rocks found amongst the shores of Wrangell, an island town in part of Alaska's Inside Passage. For those wondering, a petroglyph is basically just a picture carved into a stone used to represent stories and knowledge. And if you'd like to see one, well, Alaska's got a bunch. While scientists argue over the purpose of the rocks, they have agreed that they were most likely created anywhere from 8 to 10,000 years ago, most likely by the native peoples that resided there at the time. But seeing as the depictions carved into some of the massive stones very closely mirror images of crop circles and other alien symbols, along with the fact that even after thousands of years the markings still remain so deep within the rock, the theory of the petroglyphs occurrence being a result of extraterrestrial artwork can't be ruled out. Not to mention, Alaska is also home to a giant underground pyramid, I'm just saying. And coming in at our number one spot, we have the golden egg. Okay, this one is super cool to me because it was found in the ocean and I'm always on the lookout for new aquatic discoveries, which by the way, if you've seen any recently, please let me know in the comments. But anyways, the flesh-like golden egg was recently discovered in August 30th of 2023 and this thing is weird. Found in the depths of the Alaskan seafloor, marine scientists are absolutely stumped as to what this thing could be. But many have speculated that it is most likely the egg casing of a new unknown creature. On a live stream, one of the scientists noted that the egg had a hole in it, saying that meant something had either tried to get in or out. Another one of the marine spectators noted that when our collective knowledge can't identify it, it's something weird, adding what kind of animal could make an egg casing like that. The team of researchers was able to successfully collect the intriguing item from the seafloor and bring it to the surface, and have so far confirmed that the golden, flesh-like egg is in fact of biological origin, meaning it's not just some prop or piece of trash, but they have yet to truly identify the strange discovery. Now, if you've even just scratched the surface of the Alaskan Triangle's many mysterious mishaps, I guarantee you've heard about the disappearance of Hale Boggs and Nick Begish. If you haven't, you're about to, and if you have, stick around because 
because you might learn something new. On October 16th of 1972, the United States representatives of the Democratic Party, along with one assistant and a pilot, set off on a campaign trip to Alaska, during which they would be forced to test their luck with the Alaskan Triangle. Any goodbyes or see you soon shared with friends or loved ones prior to takeoff would have been the last anyone would receive from any of the men. As you've probably guessed, they never made it to their destination. Not only that, but the men along with the aircraft completely vanished. Many search parties canvassed the area, a charge led by the United States government who suspected a possible assassination of the men, but no trace of either plane nor passengers were ever found. However, something else might have been. Which of course brings us to our next point. You guys know I love a good segue. The dark pyramid, as it's called, was discovered among the grounds in which frenzied groups frantically searched for bogs and baggage. Well, its presence was discovered by land surveyors who had used a ground penetrating radar in an attempt to locate the lost plane. While no such aircraft turned up, something did. Something big and buried far beneath the snow was registering on the men's equipment and it appeared to be pyramid shaped. It was getting dark so the men decided to call it for the night, but when they returned to the same place the next day, their findings shocked them. They found nothing. Not a single trace of the gigantic structure they had found less than just 24 hours before. And all of a sudden, their participation in the search was over. While some believe these men to be complete nut jobs, either seeing things or misreading their tools, many believe they got it absolutely right. Not only that, but some people even argue that the reason they were unable to find it the next day is because the American government messed with the electromagnetics of the area, rendering the equipment useless in an attempt to keep the pyramid hidden. Speculation as to what the structure might be used for include secret government testing, a United States alien base, and even a massive power source. Could this mysterious find be the source of Alaska's long-standing dark streak of missing persons? Let us know what you think in the comments. Moving into individual disappearances, we have missing person Thomas Anthony Newsy, who was reported missing on June 19th of 2001. Newsy was a traveling nurse whose main purpose in life was helping people, and at the time of his disappearance he had been working in Bethel, Maine, but was staying in Anchorage, Alaska. He was last seen on video surveillance purchasing snacks and a pack of cigarettes accompanied by an unknown woman. After Newsy's disappearance, a search for the man's whereabouts began in which they questioned the housekeepers at the motel where he was staying. And the housekeepers revealed that during their rounds they had in fact seen a strange man and woman in Newsy's room. We are unaware if this was the same woman that had been caught with him at the gas station on the security camera. Along with the information provided by the housekeepers, Newsy's bike was also discovered near the motel outside of his storage unit, and his jeep about 12 miles out of town. Not much else is known, but some speculate that the woman with Nezzy at the gas station was partners with the man at the motel, believing that the two forced Nezzy to empty his storage unit of its valuables and then drove his jeep away from the scene of the crime. But perhaps he was simply just helping a young couple with an injury? He was a nurse after all. But neither reason really lends any explanation as to what happened to Newsy himself though, so I guess I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. And next on the list we have Frank Manano, an expert on sustainable living, hunting, and Alaskan culture, whose disappearance shocked the small town of Ninana, which is located directly in the center of the Alaskan Triangle. Frank was 69 when he was reported missing on August 17th of 2020 by his family after they believed him to have gotten lost in the woods. Woods. Authorities, aware of Frank's talents, believe that he must have taken shelter in a nearby cabin after becoming turned around in the night. A search party was sent out to canvas the area with high hopes for the man's safe return. However, disappointment and dismay began to sink in after days of searching resulted in not one single indication of Frank's whereabouts. There is not much else that is known about this story other than the fact that four years later Frank still remains missing and the tragedy remains a mystery. Next on the list we have Shanna Omen, yet another disappearance appearance in which honestly not much is known. The woman went missing on June 3rd of 2019 after spending time at a friend's house in Fairbanks, Alaska. According to the friend, after hanging out they had dropped her off at Nico River, a short walk from where Omen had lived. They assumed nothing of it until several hours later when Omen's roommate called the friend saying that she had never returned home. Scared and confused, they called the police who quickly put together a search party to comb the area in which Shanna had last been seen, but after much effort they were ultimately 
ultimately unsuccessful. No other information has been released about the ongoing missing persons case, but as with all the names on this list, we are still hoping for a happy ending. Next up, we have Leonard Lane, a World War II veteran who, at the time of his disappearance on July 4th of 1995, was 73 years old. Lane, who had a very distinct limp due to injuries obtained during the war, had decided to take a walk after a local parade in the town of Fairbanks, Alaska. He went out into the woods of the Alaskan Triangle alone, a mistake which presumably would end up costing him his life. Although efforts were made to locate the man, he was never found, and in 1997, two years after his disappearance, Leonard Lane was declared legally dead. However, the case remains unsolved. And starting off our final three, we have Jail Tiara Hamblin, a mother of one who went missing on October 11th of 2014. That evening, Jail and her roommate Kendra had gone out to dinner. When they returned home, Kendra went to bed, but Jail decided that she wasn't tired, and instead texted one of her male friends around 1am asking him if he would like to get together. And at 3am, she sent a text to an unknown man. When Kendra woke up the next morning, she sent Jail a text, and when Jail didn't text back, Kendra decided to knock on her door to check on her, but she was gone. After not hearing from her all day, Kendra began to worry and called Jail's mother, who reported her missing to police on October 14th of 2024. Despite efforts, no trace of Jail was found until five months later, when her purse, containing her cell phone, social security number, and ID, was discovered by hikers buried in the snow. Her mother maintains that Jail would not have left her purse behind willingly, nor would she have abandoned her son. While the case remains unsolved, foul play is the most likely cause of this woman's disappearance. Next on the list, we have Alan Foster, who went missing on September 9th of 2013 during a solo flight over the Alaskan Triangle while piloting a Piper 32 260 aircraft. After fueling up, Foster headed straight for the airspace above the infamous Alaskan Triangle and informed the region's flight service via radio that he had planned to touch down at Cordova Airport, a destination which would later prove to be out of reach for the flyer. Just 18 minutes after takeoff, the airport's radar showed Alan Foster's aircraft craft descending almost 1,100 feet at a rapid pace before disappearing completely. Neither Alan nor his plane were ever discovered despite multiple search efforts for the two. No one is quite sure what happened here, but many are hesitant to chalk it up to either operator or mechanical error, as the plane was in perfect working condition and Alan was an expert flyer, with over 9,700 hours of airtime in various planes. The only real conclusion made regarding Alan's disappearance is that it just doesn't make make any sense. And finally, we have Paul Michael Lemaitre, a 65-year-old marathoner who went missing in the Alaskan Triangle on June 4th of 2012. That year, Paul had decided to compete in the Mount Marathon race for the first time and had trained accordingly leading up to the day. The race took off without a hitch as competitors took off on their 26.2 mile run, three and a half miles of which would consist of participants navigating through the creeks and trees of the Alaskan mountain. Paul was last seen at the home stretch just 200 meters from the finish line, and he was confirmed to be fully cognizant by a steward monitoring participants and verbally confirming bib numbers, an interaction which would become the last known record of Paul Michael. After speaking with the steward, Paul began his short descent to the finish line, but unfortunately he never made it as he suddenly disappeared without a single trace, never to be seen again. Despite the efforts of mountain rescue experts, state troopers, and search dogs, no trace of Paul was ever found, and to this day, his disappearance in the Alaskan Triangle remains a complete mystery. Starting off this countdown, we have the vampire fish falling from the sky. Back in 2015, something really weird happened in Alaska. A bunch of vampire fish, aka lampreys, were seen falling out of the sky and landing on people's lawns. Now, if you've never seen a lamprey before, they're terrifying. They look like something you see in your nightmares. It looks like a mix between a snake, an eel, a worm, and like a leech. They can be anywhere from 5 to 40 inches in length and attack fish by sucking the life out of them. Lampreys have 11 or 12 rows of teeth that wrap around in their mouth like a ring. I'm telling you, they're terrifying. Now imagine this, these aquatic creatures fallen from the sky and landed down on the ground right in front of you. People were terrified when this was happening, and rightfully so. They were probably thinking that it's like the end of the world. Anyways, in the end, they believe that this was caused by gulls grabbing them out of the ocean and then dropping their dead bodies when flying over someone's lawn. Which makes me feel a bit better, like at least we know they weren't just like spawning out of the sky, you know? 
In our ninth spot today, we have the upside down tree garden. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then why don't you smash that like button because it really helps us out. This is actually quite beautiful and I would love to go to Alaska just to see this garden. Located in Mendenhall Valley, it is filled with trees that are literally planted upside down. These are referred to as flower towers. They have their tops buried in the ground and their roots are up in the air. On top of the roots, they then form like a little basket where beautiful bright flowers are planted on top. Now you may be wondering, who designed this garden and why? Well, in 1985, a landslide uprooted a bunch of trees and destroyed one of the main streams. So a man named Steve, a landscaper, was assigned to restore the stream. As he was working on it, he picked up a large fallen tree stump that was upside down and slammed it into the soft mud. Then he was like, you know, that's cool, and then continued to take all these trees and just put them in the mud upside down. And Steve was right, because it does look freaking cool. Coming in at number eight, we have the giant crab, aka the red king crabs. Now, when I say that these things are giant, they are giant, like massive. They can grow up to 25 pounds with a leg span of five feet. Dude, I'm about five, five and a half, so those things would be close to my size if I like lay down beside them, which I never would, but. Anyways, fishing them in Alaska is really popular. Roughly 100 boats go out fishing for them over a period of two to three months, and millions of pounds of this crab are harvested. So it must be an Alaskan delicacy. In our seven spots, Today we have the moose poop jewelry, and you heard me correctly. There are people in Alaska that turn moose poop into earrings, necklaces, you name it. I mean, hey, it's sustainable, so why not? But just the thought of someone like handling moose poo it just makes me shiver. You know, like the smell would get to me. But it's not only jewelry that you can buy there. You can get tree ornaments or keychains, all made out of moose poop too. Don't worry though, the poo is fully dried and double coated with a seal, so not only does that strengthen it, but it also makes sure that it doesn't smell. In our sixth spot, we have the abandoned igloo city. Located in Cantwell, Alaska, there's an abandoned igloo building. It was first created with the intention to be a cool little hotel but it never got fully completed. Back in the 1970s when they were building it, the workers kept failing to beat building codes at the time. So they just gave up. And it was easier and cheaper to just leave the building up instead of tearing it down, so that's why it's still there. Now the outside might look complete, but the inside is not finished at all. So now it's just a cool little tourist attraction. But sadly, you're not allowed inside to explore. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Dr. Seuss house. Again, another place that I would love to visit. Located in Willow, Alaska, the Dr. Seuss house, or the Goose Creek Tower, is a 185 feet tall structure that looks like several houses stacked on top of each other. And that's because it basically is. It honestly looks like something straight out of a Dr. Seuss book, which is why it's given that name. Anyways, the bottom of the house started by a 40 by 40 foot log cabin. Then the designer started adding more and more cabins on the house, each getting smaller and smaller as they ascend into the sky. But they unfortunately were forced to stop when they reached the height of 185 feet. Because if they go past 200 feet, then they're getting into federal airspace territory. In our fourth spot, we have HARP. HARP, aka High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, was created by the government to analyze the ionosphere, which is the area where the Earth's atmosphere meets space. Seeing this area from afar, it looks weird. It's just like a parking lot filled with massive antennas. But this place also has a number of conspiracy theories surrounding it. For example, many people believe that the government is using this base to control the weather or even mind control us. Another theory is that the government is actually using this place to create and test geothermal weapons, space weapons, or even death ray weapons. It's crazy, I know. Coming in at number three, we have the outhouse races. Imagine visiting Alaska and then seeing a bunch of people in outhouses on skis racing down the street. This is a real thing that they do in Alaska as part of the Anchorage Fur Rendezvous. So teams actually create and design slash decorate their own outhouses. Like I said, the outhouses are then placed on skis or a snowboard. And then four team members push or pull the outhouse to the finish line while one person is inside of it. 
Not gonna lie, this looks extremely fun. Like I love to watch this race or even design my own outhouse. As weird as that sounds, I never thought I would ever say that sentence in my life. Coming in at number two, we have the Lady of the Lake. Now, when I first heard this, I'm like, damn, I bet this is about a creepy ghostly lady that like drowned in Alaskan Lake and now haunts the area. I was completely wrong. I was way off, okay? I've just been doing way too many ghost videos lately. Anyways, the Lady of the Lake is an abandoned aircraft that is submerged at the bottom of a lake in Alaska. Basically, in 1955, the Air Force got rid of all the WB-29 Super Fortress planes due to an accident. So they took this plane and brought it to the lake. That's when it was used for open water extraction training. But after using it for quite some time, they're like, nah, sorry, it's still too dangerous to use this plane. So they literally just left it there and then it sank to the bottom. So. There you go. And in our number one spot today, we got the Blue Babe. This is the name given to the mummified remains of an Ice Age bison. The remains are more than 36,000 years old. So basically, during the Alaskan gold rush, when they were looking for gold, they came across a number of mummified animals. Obviously, they didn't care because it wasn't gold, so they just tossed the bodies aside. Then in 1979, a miner was like, yo, what the hell is this? Because he just saw a pair of bison feet sticking out of the mud. They carefully dug it out, and like I said, they discovered that this bison was 36,000 years old. Now, what's kind of weird is that they then took the bison's skin off of its carcass and just attached it to a replica model of it. Like, that was their way of preserving it. But still, it's kind of weird, like, de-skinning and then reconstructing a dead animal. Starting off this countdown, we have the giant mosquitoes. First off, I would like to give a huge shout out to subscriber Rocker Bob. He left a comment about the mosquitoes in Alaska and they definitely deserve a spot on today's list. The mosquitoes in Alaska are so big that they joke around and call them the state bird. The biggest type are a kind called the snow mosquito and they are about the length of a full grown American honeybee. Yeah. It's massive. I mean, on the plus side, you can see them coming. Like, I hate when all of a sudden I'm like, ah, I got a mosquito bite, right? Like, where did that come from? Maybe now you'll be able to see these suckers and then, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But here's the thing. The swarm of mosquitoes there are so aggressive, they have been known to chase herds of caribou into the sea. Not only that, they have the ability to completely drain a caribou. Isn't that absolutely terrifying? So if you're planning on going, make sure you put bug repellent on your packing list. Several cans. Moving on at number nine, we have the laws. All right, so if you're planning your trip to Alaska, you know you need that mosquito repellent, but you also should just, you know, do a little refresher on the laws there. You don't wanna do anything illegal and risk getting arrested. Here are some of the weirdest laws you'll find in Alaska. For starters, it's illegal to wake up a sleeping bear in the purpose to take its photo. Who is dumb enough to wake up a sleeping bear? Anyways, if it's not for the purpose of taking a photo, can you wake it up? I don't know. It's also illegal to push a moose out of an airplane. Damn it, there goes my weekend plans. Like seriously, clearly this has happened before so they had to make this a law. But uh, who's loading a moose onto an airplane in the first place and then second, who's then pushing it out? That's just messed up. Anyways, it's also illegal to give alcohol to a moose. Again, that means someone was caught doing this, so then they had to then make it a law. And it's also illegal to tie your pet dog to the roof of a car. Excuse me? Who the hell is doing that? That's just incredibly messed up. But yeah, that's just some of the many weird laws. Coming in at number eight, we have the giant halibut. Again, thank you to Rocker Bob for telling me about this one as well. But uh, the fish in Alaska are massive. Like, what are people feeding them? You see this picture right here? This is not edited at all. That is a 327 pound halibut caught by a man named Greg Brewer. I have so many questions. One, how did they catch that? Two, how did they reel that bad boy in? Three, why is that fish so big? Seriously, apparently Alaskan halibut can grow to be eight feet long and five feet wide. They can also weigh up to 500 pounds. I literally don't believe this. Like, 
What is in the waters over there? Coming in at number seven, we have the lake monster. Of course, Alaska has a lake monster. I mean, have you seen the size of those fish? Those alone are monsters. But over at Iliamna Lake, there's a supposed lake monster that has been spotted a number of times throughout the years. It even has been blamed for a number of deaths. As a result, the monster has been given the name Illy. The monster is said to be 10 to 30 feet in length with a square like head. It uses its head to then knock boats over. People are so determined to catch this thing that there's a $100,000 reward given to anyone that provides concrete evidence that this monster exists. One of the first sightings was in 1942 by Babe Ellsworth and Bill Hammersley. They were on a flight over the lake when they saw something weird moving in the waters below. When they got closer down to it, they saw this long, massive creature flipping its tail side to side. Over the years, a number of other pilots and boaters have seen this creature as well. So just be careful if you ever decide to go swimming or bring your camera so you can capture this creature and then get the cash, even better. In our sixth spot, we have Mukluk Land. Mukluk Land is said to be one of the most bizarre and creepy amusement parks in the world. The theme of this park is there is none. It's basically like a collection of random stuff. You got rusting snowmobiles and a giant cabbage, but scariest of all, you got this weird place of dolls. Basically, there's a log cabin and it's just filled with hundreds of dolls. Like they're everywhere on the floor, shelves, walls, you get it. But I don't quite understand because entering the cabin is forbidden. In fact, there's a big open bear trap waiting for you in the room if you do trespass and enter. Why have a display that you can't visit? I don't know, I just, I just have a feeling that those dolls are cursed or possessed or something like that. They just threw them all inside of one big cabin and locked them up. I'm just kidding, but still, the place does look cursed. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the hairy beast. So not only do you have to look out for lake monsters while you're there, but also these big hairy beasts that resemble Bigfoot. Hey, maybe it's his older brother or something. Anyways, a number of disappearances and deaths have been linked to a mysterious hairy beast that lurks in Port Chatham. In the 1930s, a number of people went missing in the area. In 1931, Andrew Kamluck went out logging. He was later found dead in the forest. He got a bad blow to his head. Around the same time, a man named Simone Vaznikov was out in that area and randomly disappeared without a trace. Another man named Tom Larson was out chopping wood when he said he saw something hairy on the beach and it wasn't my uncle without a shirt on. <laughs> the creature was just standing there staring at him. Thankfully, it didn't attack. Also, on a number of other occasions, people have seen weird man-like footprints in the mud. So I think it's time to gather a team and go Bigfoot hunting. Who's with me? Moving on to number four, we have the massive produce. So we got massive mosquitoes, massive fish, massive beasts. What's next? Well, how about massive produce? Because of the fact that Alaska has long summer days, they are able to grow oversized produce like a 35 pound broccoli, a 65 pound cantaloupe, and a 138 pound cabbage. They get like 20 hours of sunshine, so yeah, they're just growing nonstop. In fact, there's even an annual Alaska State Fair where people show off the massive produce they have grown. They've got massive pumpkins, zucchini, watermelon, anything you could ever dream of. Honestly, I'd be down to do a little taste testing of these magically big produce. Who's with me? Moving on at number three, we have the sunlight. In the northern parts of Alaska, they can receive 24 hours of sunlight in the summer, which is great for people that love basking in the sun. Then you got the downside to that. In Barrow, they get around two months of just sheer darkness in the winter. Those with seasonal depression would absolutely suffer there. I just find that crazy. It's like from one extreme to another, from 24 hours of sunlight to 24 hours of darkness. It's crazy. Coming in at number two, we have Gnome. Apparently, a number of people have gone missing in Nome within the past 75 years. Between 1960 to 2004, about two dozen residents disappeared without a trace. There are a number of theories regarding these disappearances, from UFO involvement, to alien abductions, to even serial killers. It's crazy! People just don't know what's happening to these residents. In fact, the Hollywood movie The Fourth Kind was meant to tell the story of Nome, but obviously they made it scarier and UFO based. And 
in our number one spot today, we have the Moose Dropping Festival. This is uh, a quite interesting festival, to say the least. But basically, for years, there was this annual moose dropping festival. Basically, they took moose poop, slapped some varnish on it, and then numbered them. The poop was then dumped from a crane in a parking lot. People willing to participate all had a number that corresponded with the poo that they were rooting on. The piece of moose poop that landed closest to the center of the target would receive a cash prize. Kind of seems fun, it's a little weird, but you know, seems fun, not gonna lie. But sadly, the event started to get too big and in 2009, they had to stop hosting it. Starting off this countdown, we have the Alaska Triangle. Turns out that Alaska has its very own Bermuda Triangle. This is referred to as the area in the southeast, to the northern Boro region, to the western metropolis of Anchorage. Apparently, more than 20,000 people have gone missing in this area. That's just in the past half century alone. And these people go missing without a trace. No one knows what happens to them or where they went. So some believe that this area is home to mythological type beasts that kidnap and then eat these people. Whereas others believe that this area is home to some dark vortex that sucks these poor souls in. Regardless of what you believe in, one thing is for sure, this triangle has and continues to take the lives of many. In our ninth spot, we have the UFO base. And if you guys are still watching, hopefully smash that like button, let me know in the comments below that you're still here, hi. It is believed that Alaska is home to a top secret UFO base. Even though it's not that top secret if people claim that there is one. Anyways, Mount Hayes is the highest mountain in the eastern Alaskan range. That's the place where people believe extraterrestrials and UFOs are located. It all started in the 1940s when a number of UFOs were spotted in that area. Eventually, the sightings got more and more frequent that the FBI was called in to investigate the area. And the sightings haven't stopped. There have been hundreds of sightings throughout the years. In fact, Pat Price, a former CIA remote viewer, even said that the mountain, and I quote, housed one of the alien's largest bases. So this urban legend might not be so much of a legend. In our eighth spot, we have the Captain Cook. This is a cute little hotel located in downtown Anchorage. According to legends though, this hotel is extremely haunted. Apparently a woman took her life in the hotel in the 70s, and her ghost can be seen wandering the halls. In particular, she is said to haunt the woman's restroom there. Visitors also claim that doors will open and close on their own, and the lights will flicker on and off by themselves. According to locals, this woman is bound to the hotel and doesn't know how to escape it. So she's just stuck there, aimlessly wandering the halls for eternity. I don't know why she would haunt the bathroom though. Like that's not a place I would hang around in if I was a ghost. Moving on at number seven, we have Key Loot. A Kilut is said to be an evil earth spirit that appears in the form of a black dog that's completely hairless, but it does have hair on its little feet. But only its feet. Apparently this dog then stalks travelers at night and has been known to attack and kill them. Those that have apparently seen this spirit say they saw dog tracks in the snow that then disappeared right in front of their own eye. That's apparently a sign that the Kilut is nearby. In Inuit legend, the Kilu is said to be a spirit of death. Others believe that it's a real life cryptid. Scariest part, apparently just by looking at this creature, they can cause victims to become disoriented and spiral into madness. They then will become lost and perish from hypothermia. The Kilu waits until this moment and then attacks and eats its victim. In our sixth spot, we have Mother Lode Lodge. Located in Palmer, this lodge is said to be very haunted. In fact, it literally has been known to spook even the hardest of souls. According to local legend, this hotel is haunted by a number of different spirits. Most famously, there's this black apparition ghost, given that name because it always appears as a black cloudy apparition. People have seen this spirit wandering the grounds. Another ghost is a figure that's dressed in black. This figure likes to show itself in mirror reflections. Just sounds like Bloody Mary to me. No thank you. On top of that, people have reported hearing strange noises in the middle of the night and have seen curtains open and close by itself. It's a good place to go ghost hunting, but a bad place to spend the night. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the aliens. 
In late fall through winter to early spring, the northern lights can be seen on nights with clear skies. I've always wanted to see the northern lights, like they're quite beautiful. But according to a weird urban legend, it states that the northern lights are produced by aliens. Yeah, you heard me. Legend goes that aliens create these beautiful lights so that they can then fly through the air undetected. In fact, cosmonaut Ivan Wagner was filming the northern lights when he captured a UFO flying by. Plus, there's already a ton of UFO and alien sightings in Alaska. So, could it be that this legend is true? That the aliens are behind this colorful display of lights? Moving on to number four, we have the sea monster. Located in the waters near Kodiak Island lurks a close relative to the Loch Ness Monster. It has since been given the name the Kodiak Sea Monster. It all started in 1971 when a group of fishermen set sail. That's when they encountered this massive sea beast. One of the fishermen said, and I quote, We don't know what it was, but it had a grayish color and we couldn't see any fins or any tail, and it never made any noise. It would just come up and you could see the head and part of the body. Another man described it as being 30 feet long and had a head on it that looked kind of like a horse. Then in 2002, it was seen again, this time by a different group of fishermen. They described it as having a massive head and neck. They couldn't tell if the head was a foot in diameter or three feet in diameter. To this day, the beast has never been caught, so maybe it's still out there, continuing to scare local fishermen. In our third spot, we have the Alaskan Vortex. So let's talk more about this Alaskan Triangle. The missing persons rate in that area is more than twice the national average. It's insane. As I mentioned briefly, some people believe that a vortex is to blame for all the disappearances. Legend goes that the vortex basically sucks people in and then transports them to different dimensions. Let's look at some of the facts used to support this theory. For starters, apparently the area has a huge number of magnetic anomalies. It throws off compasses and has even made people feel sick. A number of rescue workers that have gone gone into the area have claimed to feel disoriented, lightheaded, and have experienced auditory hallucinations. This could be evidence that a vortex is present. Kicking off the list at number 10, ice worms. Yeah, ice worms. Need I say any more right there? Ice worms, that's terrifying by themselves. I'm dodging these suckers all spring, now I gotta worry about winter too. Get out of town. I'm Canadian, we don't need ice worms, come on, we have ice in general, that's bad enough. The only time a worm lives its life in glacial ice is in, you guessed it, Alaska. Yeah, all these things are in Alaska, in case you didn't already know that. All my life I've seen worms shrivel up and fade away on the sidewalk. They just evaporate, it's so horrible. But I've never even seen a worm near ice. Is that even possible? Apparently so. They're supposed to run out of fuel and die off, but ice worms are like the Energizer Bunny. These things just keep going, even if they're frozen. Little Captain America worms. Should that icy temperature rise, however, above freezing, well, that's when it becomes slower and dies off the way that we see every worm go. You know, just uh, in a horrible, gross way. Honestly, these things are super cool. I'm not a fan of worms, obviously, but scientifically, these guys are so alien. They're pretty cool. I had to kick off the list with them. Teach me your ways. I'm always so cold. Again, hate Canada. I'm just kidding. That's fine. Number nine, banana slugs. This one's pretty gross too, I'm not gonna lie. Get the gross ones out of the way right off the hop. Banana slugs get their name because of their yellow color. They are not yummy. They have nothing to do with bananas. They do not taste like bananas at all. Nothing like banana medicine. That one's pretty close. They're also quite large, these slugs, but the thing that really sets them apart here is that they have a single lung that's exposed. I know, as I said that, you probably went, ugh. Yeah, it's horrible. It's one of the worst things I've read. Alaskan banana slugs are dark green, so even creepier, dare I say, than the average. And these slugs need to stay wet at all times. I wanted to say that they stay, you know, something that starts with the letter M, but we don't like that word, apparently. This word would have been perfect for said organism. Moist. There, I said it. <laughs> these slugs are also hermaphrodites. They have all the reproductive organs needed for the fun, only after a mating season, they'll kind of black widow the other party. Yeah, nature's wild. Olivia, don't eat me. Thanks. Number eight, new whale species. You may be thinking, how does one miss a whale for this long? Aren't they insanely large? Haven't we found them all? I would hope. Well, when a 20 foot long whale washed up on the beach in Alaska, researchers studied it and came to the conclusion that this species of whale, specifically called the Baird's beaked whale, upon further investigation is part of an entirely new species of whale. Yep, we thought we knew what it was. Mm -mm, different. A new whale from 2014, and we didn't even know it for a couple years. 
This new discovery has darker flesh and the dorsal fin was bigger and floppier. It was bigger and floppier. Imagine a scientist saying that. Uh, yeah, it's bigger and floppier. They're like, great, heard. The only other whale with the same genetic code that can be studied was found in a nearby high school gymnasium. Yeah, not alive. It was the skeleton. It was just, you know, up there for morale, I guess. Nothing gets the kids going on the beep test than a skeleton above. Just a whale skeleton. Like they were in the Avengers and they just, I don't know. Well, where is this? Alaska? Wild. Next time you talk smack about your high school mascot, make sure it's not a rare fish that's previously undiscovered. Yeah, always take a look. Check yourself, Bradley. Stop making fun of your mascots. My mascot was a dragon. But not like a cool dragon though. He was like a lame dragon. I'll move on. Number seven, needle snout monster. This one comes from around 200 million years ago. So not that new. This fossil had been discovered recently, however. It was discovered back in 2011 on an island just a few feet above sea level. So it was almost pretty close to fading away forever. It looks like an ancient iguana almost. It's a marine reptile thalatosaur. It's a new discovery from that time. This thing was roaming around Alaska 200 million years ago. I used to think humans were born too late. This pointy nosed dude has changed my mind, my friends. We love science. We love finding things late. It's the only intact thalatosaur fossil ever discovered in North America, which is pretty sweet. Pat Drunkenmiller, director of the University of Alaska Museum of the North. <laughs> Sounds like something from Game of Thrones. The Museum of the North. He really thinks this is a fascinating find and rightfully so. The snout is pointed. It's literally razor sharp. This guy would have been an absolute menace back then. Thank God he's gone. Now instead we have to deal with these guys. Number six, nudie Bronx. Ah uh, yes, nudie Bronx. We love saying it. Go tell all your friends. Hey, know what I learned about? Nudie Bronx. Nudie Bronx. These little things are so strange. I cannot wait to talk about them. These soft gastropod mollusks are too cool for their shell. Yeah, they're so fancy. They're just like, mm, I'll just be naked forever. No problem. They show it all. No shame. They're fancy sea slugs, basically. Their colors have made them the subjects of many nicknames. Obviously, these have been baffling sailors for centuries. There's more to them than you'd think. They can smell and taste through their fingertips. What a feature. I can't tell if I would want this or never ever want this. What's cooking? <laughs> That's horrible. I would eat things through my hands all the time. Oh my God, it's still treats from my friend's backpacks. There's over 3,000 all waiting. There's over 3,000 types of these dudes all waiting to be explored on Alaskan's ocean floor. If you want to get an up close look yourself, just know they're quite good at absorbing toxins from predators and then storing them for later on. So tread lightly. Don't be poking anything. Watch out for colorful deep sea spaghetti. Always keep your eye open for deep sea spaghetti. You'll see them coming also. These things are giant and they look like they're from Avatar. You won't miss them. Number five, a strange catch. When you fish off Alaska's coast, you really never know what you reel in. Sea creatures are already creepy enough, but imagine pulling up this thing. Back in 2019, an angler named Sarah Alford pulled up this alien looking sea creature. And when she posted her catch online, everybody else was like, great. What is it though? <laughs> No one had any idea what this thing was, including herself. Everybody was just as confused as she was. What planet did you catch this thing on? The clip got millions of views, no problem. People were upset in the comments even, saying not to pull him out of the water because he couldn't breathe. But then other comments are like, yeah, but why? What is it? Is it a fish? Does that mean that's a fish? Turns out this thing is a basket star, a species of shinoderm, AKA sea star. Yeah, it's just a fancy starfish. Yeah, not all starfish look like starfish. Sometimes they look like inside out aliens. Sometimes they look like haunted bowls of ramen. The more you know. Number four, pyrosomes. I've said it once and I will say it again. The ocean, the sea, hell, even the lake sometimes. Nope, not going in. I'm gonna stay dry forever. It's home to a lot of weird stuff. There's a lot of weird stuff hiding in the water. Starfish that look like they're inside out, jellyfish that age in reverse. It's all truly alien. The more we find, the happier lad I am on the land. Like pyrosomes, for example. This is straight out of, I don't know, hell. These tropical tube-shaped sea creatures are appearing in the millions near Alaska. Why? Eh, wouldn't you like to know? They began to show up back in 2017 and we're still figuring out what's going on with them. They're these foot-long tubes. They're these glowing sea tubes. They look like deflated sea pickles almost. They're so odd. Just sad sea balloons. Researchers at NOAA's Alaska Fishery Center are shocked because they've never seen pyrosomes travel this far north before. Where are they going? Why? Why is it becoming a common sighting in Alaskan waters now? These numbers are so high that when fishermen are finding them, they're clogging all their gear up. Yeah, their nets are just layered in this goop. Just jellyfish balloon goop. Nice, we love it. Number three, the basking shark. 
Translating to large-nosed sea monster, nice, for good reason there, I guess. The basking shark is something I hope I never run into at any point in my life. Even in an aquarium, I don't wanna, I don't wanna see it. I'll close my eyes and walk through that entire exhibit. I don't wanna look at it. They swim around the surface of the water, first of all, scary, and search for tiny food. They search for plankton. Despite how big and scary their mouths are, their meal is preferably tiny. Basking sharks will go years without seeing one of these. Basking sharks will go years without seeing one of these, but once we do, we're in luck because more often than not, basking sharks will travel in large numbers and they're found in both the Atlantic and the Pacific. As of 2019, basking sharks were considered endangered thanks to overfishing. Yeah, they have some biological mysteries behind them though. The basking shark mouth is massive and like I said before, quite scary, but otherwise it's pretty normal. Basking shark females, however, they only have one functioning ovary and it's always the same every time. It's always on the right side and we're still not quite sure why. Number two, red squirrels. Okay, so Olivia told me recently that black squirrels in Toronto, they aren't a thing everywhere. They're not a thing in Regina. But over in Toronto, my whole life, I've seen black squirrels everywhere. Maybe even more so than a brown squirrel. So this one I had to throw in because I simply don't know anymore. My whole life is now a lie. I could be colorblind for all I know. Because now we got red squirrels over in Alaska. Like red, like mighty red. These things look like Vikings. A common sighting over there. They have these cute white bellies. They look straight out of a fairy tale. That's another thing. Every time you see a squirrel in a book, it's always brown. I can't confidently tell you what color squirrels are anymore. Zebras, I got, that's fine. Zebras, no problem. Squirrels, no clue. The only squirrels I see downtown Toronto look like they just got a buzz cut out of nowhere. They're like losing hair. They have bald spots. I don't know. These squirrels are up to no good. I don't want to know what's going on. You ever see a squirrel that clearly just got into an altercation and you're like, hey, little guy. <laughs> I can't talk to Toronto squirrels. Squirrels are too scary. Alaskan red squirrels, those are awesome. We like those. Those are probably a bit more gentle. They don't have to dodge taxi cabs. And finally, number one, the king crab. Okay, I am not great with spiders. You've seen this, you know this on this channel here. And crabs, in case you're wondering, nope, no better. They're larger and they can swim. <laughs> Two more red flags, my friends. Not a big fan of crabs, but the Alaskan king crab, they're, they're honestly pretty impressive. I had to put them at number one. They're an OG. They have the name Alaskan in their name. You know what I mean? <laughs> They've made their home. These king crabs can reach up to five feet wide. A giant sea spider, great. But instead of eight legs, they only have six. But the massive claws that resemble boxing gloves, those don't feel too good on your skin. You wanna avoid that. The bizarre thing about these yummy sea creatures with the Alaskan king crab is that their right claw is often way bigger than the left. And that claw is more often than not their weapon. That's their go-to weapon. So they're not right or left-handed. They're just like, oh, what's bigger? This one, sure. That's how they pick which handed. There. Number nine, the Golden North Hotel. The Golden North Hotel, sounds like a Game of Thrones classic. There have been reports of paranormal activity on the third floor of the Golden North Hotel in Skagway, Alaska. I like when it's specific, when it has a certain floor or a certain room, it's how you know it's legit. Guests and staff have reported hearing strange noises, seeing apparitions, and feeling unexplained cold spots on the floor. I guess they're walking around with bare feet. Bare feet in a hotel, that's brave. Some have even claimed to have encountered the ghost of a former employee named Mary who is said to haunt the hotel. All these ghosts that are haunting their past work establishments. If I die, I'm gonna haunt this place for sure. While the hotel embraces its haunted history and offers guided ghost tours for visitors, which is an odd flex, it's worth noting that paranormal experiences are subjective and not everybody may have the same encounter, okay? So, what's fun to some is haunting to others, so tread carefully in the ghost world. Don't make fun of people online, you know? Some are really afraid of ghosts with chef hats, so. Number eight, Gekona Lodge and Trading Post. There are reports and stories about Gekona Lodge and Trading Posts being haunted. There's a lot online. This is probably a very real one. Some visitors and staff have claimed to have experienced unusual occurrences and paranormal activity at this lodge, which was supposed to be a winter getaway, but now it's just a Stanley Kubrick classic. According to the stories, the ghost of a woman dressed in 1800 style clothing has been seen walking, or floating rather, through the lodge. And strange noises and footsteps have been heard in empty rooms. It's always an old fashioned ghost too. It's never a ghost wearing a polo. You ever notice that? It's always like an old Victorian woman. Like why? Why can't we have a newer ghost? Slim Pickens on the attire in heaven, I guess. 
Must be. They're like, hey, we have an old saggy robe, and that's about it. Here you go. Go haunt a hotel. There have also been reports of objects moving on their own, doors opening and closing by themselves, and again, cold spots in certain areas on the floor, which, I don't know, it could be lousy heating, really, if you ask me. It's Alaska, right? Number seven, Westmark Fairbanks Hotel. There have been numerous reports of paranormal activity in room 277 of the Westmark Fairbanks Hotel in Alaska. Again, I like when it's a specific room. That, for me, seals the deal. It's like 1408. I'm in. I'm locked in. Now I'm a believer. It's so eerie. The room is said to have been haunted by the ghost of a woman who allegedly took her own life there many years ago, which is sad and terrifying. Guests who have also stayed in that room have reported feeling uneasy or my personal nightmare. They feel as if they're being watched all night. Yeah, just eyes in a painting watching you, I guess. Sometimes they even hear strange noises or voices and seeing unexplained movements of objects. Those classic three ghost things. Some guests have also claimed to have seen the ghostly figure of a woman in the room or in the hallway. So let's get this one really hits all the marks. Five stars for paranormal activity, really. Number six, the Hilton Anchorage Hotel. Guests and staff members have both reported seeing apparitions, hearing strange noises, and experiencing other unusual phenomenon in various parts of the hotel. Phenomena? Phenomenon? I always add the N there. I'm not sure which one it is. One of the most commonly reported haunted areas of this hotel is said to be the third floor, particularly rooms 309 and 317. Two for one package. It's the north and south sides are haunted, but everything in the middle... Yeah, you're good, just don't explore. Guests who have stayed in these rooms have both reported seeing ghostly apparitions and experiencing other strange occurrences, like lights turning on and off by themselves and the feeling of being touched by an unseen presence. What a terrible, annoying ghost. I think I would rather see a ghost than have them f with the lights all night long. You know what I mean? How annoying is that? You have to get out of your bed and keep shutting it off? That's the worst. That's worse than it's being haunted, really. It is a Hilton, so it's probably at least a decent sleep, you know? They're good over there. They got a good, nice breakfast set up in the morning. It's all about the departure the next day. That's all it is for hotels. You could have ghosts all night, lights flickering, but you have a juice bar the next morning? I'll forget about the whole ordeal. We're good, five stars, I'm coming back. Number five, the Van Gilder Hotel. Located in Seaward, Alaska, the Van Gilder Hotel, I mean, first of all, this thing is tiny. It looks like a joke. It looks like a cartoon police station. How is this place haunted? It looks like a place Wreck-It Ralph would have a field day with. Small but mighty, I guess. The hotel, which was built in 1916, has a long, long history of ghosts and ghouls. Numerous reports of paranormal activity over the years. One of the most commonly reported haunted areas is the room 202, where guests have reported unexplained movements of objects, and again, the feeling of being watched, which is so scary, I don't like that, it's the worst. There have also been reports of ghostly operations in other parts of the hotel, including the lobby and the stairwell. The lobby? These ghosts are getting brave. I mean, not even letting us check in and you're already moving shit around trying to scare us, that's very brave, okay. You're excited, we get it. The most famous ghost associated with the Van Gilder Hotel is that of a woman named Fanny Guthrie Bame who apparently died in the hotel back in the 1950s. Guests have reported seeing Fanny's ghostly figure on the second floor. That's where she allegedly fell to her death from the balcony, which is so sad. If I didn't see that again though, as a ghost, I'd be like, oh, this is a terrible TikTok loop scenario. Number four, Inlet Tower Hotel and Suites. Okay, this one is very, very large, and it looks very haunted, okay? It doesn't look like a mini police station. This one's very Kubrick. This hotel, which was built in 1952, it already has a long history. It's seen a few deaths in its rooms, and of course, to follow, there have been numerous reports of ghostly apparitions over the years. Apparitions, apparitions, I'm mixing it up now. I'm just saying random words. One of the most common Commonly reported haunted areas of the hotel is the 15th floor, way high up in here. This is haunted. Where guests have heard strange moaning noises. It's kind of funny. That's it's ter terrifying. Don't get me wrong, but like, that's kind of like, okay, who's doing that? Which which room is that coming from? You know, feeling cold spots and seeing ghostly figures walk around the hallways at night. It's your classic haunted hotel. The most famous ghost associated with the Inlet Tower Hotel is that of a woman who allegedly jumped to her death from the 15th floor. That is really high up. That's so sad. Guests have reported seeing her ghostly figure on the 15th floor as well as in the hotel's elevator, which is better. That's definitely a step. As long as she's in the elevator this time around, we're good. Keep her in there, not outside on the scary balcony. Inside where it's safe. Number three, the Fairbanks Memorial Hospital. A haunted hospital, nice. I couldn't imagine a more vulnerable place to 
see a ghostly figure. Excuse me, can I get some more jello? Lights are flickering, some chicks floating. They're like, uh, I'm gonna check out. The Fairbanks Memorial Hospital in Alaska. I mean, the hospital, first of all, it was built in 1972, and it has a long history of, well, hospital stuff. A lot of deaths, also a lot of new life. So silver lining, I guess, that's a good thing. One of the most commonly reported areas is the intensive care unit, the ICU. That's what the ghosts say. They say, hey, I see you right there. I'll watch you all night. Both staff members and patients have reported hearing voices feeling someone touch them who wasn't actually there and seeing ghosts of past patients walk around the halls at night. That's that's the scariest thing I've ever heard of. Past patients? Just like... Visitors and staff members have reported seeing a ghostly figure, like a very specific ghostly figure in the ICU as well as other parts of the hospital. So, could be a past nurse, could be someone who used to work there, maybe someone who was killed while they were building it. I don't know. It's a, it, it's a good ghost. It's a hospital good ghost. That's one you maybe don't mind bumping into at night. Ice worms. Number one, the Eldred Rock Lighthouse. We'll finish up with a haunted lighthouse. Not the most exciting, but I'm doing my best here. It's that or ice worms. Both are pretty thrilling, okay? What's creepier than an island full of shipwrecks? You tell me. The lighthouse, which was built in 1906, is located on a remote island in the Lynn Canal, and it was in operation until 1973. One of the most notorious shipwrecks was the Clara Nevada Steamship. Now, in 1898, she smashed into Eldrin Rock, burst into flames instantly before sinking into the icy depths, probably surrounded by ice worms. The disaster took 75 lives and it's also believed that hundreds of pounds of gold were on board when this ship sank. So it was a curse. It was for sure cursed. All that gold, that many people died. I smell a curse. I know it. One of the most commonly reported ghost occurrences at the Eldrin Rock Lighthouse is the sighting of a ghostly woman, again, you guessed it, wearing all white. The classic Victorian gown. Legend has it the woman was a former lighthouse keeper's wife who died on the island and has remained there in spirit. Remained there. I guess she's stuck there for all of eternity, but we'll say she remained there. And if that's not enough for you, the lighthouse has been the subject of paranormal investigations. And some investigators have captured electronic voice phenomena. Yeah, they got EVPs on this island, so it's the real deal. That's how you know. Remind me to avoid this lighthouse at all costs. Great, cheers. Coming in at number 10 is the statistics. The Alaska Triangle is a remote area infamous for alien abductions, Bigfoot sightings, paranormal phenomena, and vanishing airplanes. The Alaska Triangle has everything the Bermuda Triangle has, but with more mountains and it's cold. Like much of Alaska, the Triangle contains some of the most rugged, unforgiving wilderness in North America. It's an impossibly vast expanse of dense forests, craggy mountain peaks, alpine lakes, and large swaths of plains old wilderness. Now the sheer number of people who go missing is absolutely shocking. Add to the fact that many disappear without a shred of evidence, and bodies, alive or dead, are rarely found. More than 16,000 people, including airplane passengers, hikers, locals, and tourists, have disappeared within the Alaska Triangle since 1988. The rate per 1,000 people is more than twice the national missing persons average, and the rate of people who are never found is even higher. The numbers don't lie, and they imply that something else is going on here other than people merely getting lost in the mountains. So what's really going on here? Seems like no one really knows, and I do not want to be the one to find out. Number 9. Thomas Hale Boggs Disappearance in 1972, a twin-engine Cessna 310 plane was carrying Representative Thomas Hale Boggs, the House Majority Leader, Representative Nick Begich, Russell Brown, a Begich aide, and the pilot Don Johns. They were traveling during a campaign trip to Alaska and vanished while en route between Anchorage and Juneau. While on their flight, they just disappeared. At noon on October 17th, Representative Tip O'Neill of Massachusetts told anxious House members that it is our hope and prayer of course that the men will be found safe. Now their disappearance triggered the largest search and rescue operation up to that point in US history. It involved 40 military aircrafts, 50 civilian planes, a search grid of 325,000 square miles, and more than 3,600 hours of search time. Now after 39 days the search was called off with no signs of the wreckage or survivors. Now the accident prompted Congress to pass a law mandating the installation of emergency locator transmitters in all U.S. civil aircrafts. And with all of this, conspiracy theories have since risen over the circumstances of Hale's death and disappearance. 
Number seven, Douglas C. 54D. On the morning of January 26, 1950, Robert Epsey, a master sergeant in the US Air Force, waved goodbye to his wife, not knowing it'd be the last time they would see each other alive. As Robert and other 43 passengers boarded the Douglas C. 54D Skymaster, they were all ready for the journey to Montana to begin. Now, usually, all airborne aircraft must be in constant communication with the operators at the airport. However, this Skymaster cut off all communications moments after takeoff. With friends and relatives waiting in Minnesota, their loved ones never arrived. Over 75 Canadian and US aircrafts were assigned to look for the missing plane to no avail. The aircraft and the passengers' remains have never been recovered. And I mean, where did they all go? How can you just lose a plane like that? Number six. Paranormal. In the book Alaska's Mysterious Triangle, Chapter 8, the author says he was going ghost hunting in a group and they didn't get any activity, so they grabbed a bite to eat. Now, during this, a thunderstorm passed by, and when they went back to the building the group was investigating, they had a lot of activity. Speaking of the incident, they said our meters were off the charts, balls of lights were dancing amongst the treetops, and the beating of a Native American drum was also heard echoing from the tree line along the creek. He also says paranormal. Normal investigators love working during or after thunderstorms because the hauntings seem to be more active, which is something I never knew, which is pretty cool. Number five, Thomas Anthony Nuzzi. Thomas Anthony Nuzzi was a well-known nurse who traveled throughout Alaska, picking up different shifts in various locations. He had a well-paying job and a perfect mode of transport, but obviously no permanent resident address. While staying at a Super 8 motel in Anchorage, Thomas was reported missing after failing to show up for work in Bethel, Alaska, a short flight from where he was staying. Investigator reports dictate that Thomas was spotted buying a pack of cigarettes, a lighter, chips, and soda at a gas station the night before he was reported missing. The reports also show that he was in the company of a woman, and upon questioning the staff of the Super 8 motel, some said that a different man was spotted in Thomas's room on that same night that he went missing. While his bicycle and Jeep were later found, no one knows what happens to Thomas. Number four, mystery man. A Reddit user described a scary story they experienced while in the triangle. They said, I used to work on the north slope of Alaska in the oil industry. It was mid January, the sun hadn't quite come up yet and we were deep in the wilderness. It was about 4 in the morning when we were in our truck and then something appeared on the road in our headlights. It was the man, in jeans, sneakers, and a hoodie jacket, walking down an ice road in the wilderness tundra at 4 a.m. and it was negative 20 degrees outside. He didn't acknowledge us as our trucks rolled up next to him, he just kept shuffling forward. He didn't seem cold. I rolled down my window and asked if he needed any help and if he was okay, and he still didn't didn't acknowledge us, just kept shuffling forward. His face was completely blank, devoid of any thoughts or emotions. Now, even in the extreme cold, I could occasionally get whiffs of a peculiar smell coming off him. He smelled acidic. Now the guy behind me in the truck's crew cab rolled down his window and reached out to grab the guy, and before his hand could reach him, the man spun around and latched onto my buddy's outstretched arm. He glared at my buddy and then at me with his eyes of pure rage, not removing his hand from his arm. At that moment, this guy started screaming in our faces. I slammed on the gas, and he still had a hold of my buddy's arm and was trying to pull him out of the truck. He was running alongside the truck while the other guys in the cab held onto my buddy to keep him in inside. After several moments, my buddy tore free from this guy and we sped away. We checked in with the guards and reported what we had seen, and the guard was looking at us like we were pulling a prank, but policy said they had to check it out regardless. My buddy's arm was sore, and when he pulled back his sleeve, there were noticeable bruises in the shape of a hand around his arm. Now, a guard said they searched up and down the ice road for a solid 12-hour shift and saw nothing, not even tracks in the snow leading off the road. So who was this mysterious person? or ghost. Seems like we'll never know. Number three, UFOs. A 1986 report made the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, from a Japanese cargo flight tells about one alleged UFO experience. Allegedly, Japan Airlines Flight 1628 encountered three unidentified aerial phenomena above the expanse. The pilot reportedly thought the crafts were military and paid them no mind. Moments later, he realized that the objects were keeping pace and moving erratically around his own jet. Over the next 50 minutes, 
the strange aircraft shadowed Flight 1628's every move while emitting bursts of blinding light. The statements made by the crew were verified by civilian and military radar, and the FAA report went on to garner national attention. Number 2. Kushika The native Tlingit and Shimshian peoples have their own explanation for disappearances. The Kusika is a shape-shifting cryptid that stalks Alaska's wilderness looking for human prey. While often compared to the mythology of Bigfoot, the Kusika seems to operate in a much thinner manner. According to lore, the otter-like creatures disguise themselves as a trusted relative or friend and appear to those who are lost or injured. They lead their victims deeper into the wild, ultimately tearing them apart or turning them into another Kusika. This legend is especially popular in southeastern Alaska. In some stories, Kusika are cruel creatures who take delight in tricking poor Clinket sailors to their deaths. In some legends, it is said the Kusika will imitate cries of a baby or screams of a woman to lure victims to the river. Could it be the Kusika responsible for some of these disappearances? I think so. And coming at number one is Alan Foster. On September 9th, 2013, Alan Foster flew a Piper PA-32-260, which was later reported as missing while traveling over the Alaska Triangle region. The National Transport Safety Board reports that Alan had been flying under a visual flight rules flight plan, fueled at Yaktuit, and continued flying around 3.30 p.m. He even contacted Jano Flight Service, indicating that he would stop at Cordova if the conditions dictated. However, 18 minutes after taking off somewhere between Malaspina Glacier and the Gulf of Alaska, the radar showed Allen's aircraft descending to about 1,100 feet before disappearing. No one ever heard from Allen Foster again, and no remains of his body nor the aircraft have been found. Allen's disappearance is bizarre because he was experienced. He had over 9,700 flight hours in various aircrafts. He kept asking for key details before and during his flight, and he never reported any problems before disappearing. The only suspicious factor is where he disappeared, the Alaska Triangle. Starting off our list today, we have the mystery of the color-changing Alaskan rivers. In recent years, scientists have found themselves bewildered by the changes in their waterways, including the 451 kilometers 280 miles of the monumental Kobuk River twists and turns through the northwest Alaska. Scrambling to figure out just what the heck is going on and why not only have these waters started to turn orange, but why they have also experienced an extreme increase in acidity, the United States Geological Survey partnered with the National Park Service and the University of California Davis and the University of Alaska Anchorage and Public Pacific University together have set out to map the extent of the contamination as well as its impact on the ecosystem and the cause of it all. While the large group of scientists found their work to be inconclusive, they did come up with a few good theories. The first being that rising temperatures in the Arctic, which has been warming at an alarming rate of almost four times faster than the rest of the world, has caused permafrost to begin to thaw in certain areas of the state, releasing iron that had previously been held within the ice. Another theory suggests that not only was the color change due to excess levels of iron, but also the presence of bacteria, reducing the oxidized iron into the soil, which upon contact with the oxygenated water, turned a vibrant shade of orange and raised acidity levels to rival those of actual orange juice. Next up we have Vampire Fish Rain. It's like that song Acid Rain, but instead of acid rain, it's vampire fish falling from the sky. Now if you're starting to think I've lost my mind, let me explain. The sea lamprey, commonly referred to as the vampire fish, has been around since at least the 1800s, which is when it was first discovered. The jawless fish, which can grow up to 15 inches long, earned its nickname due to the fact that its mouth, which is ringed with many rows of sharp teeth, works as a suction cup, which allows it to attach and suck the blood of its prey along with other bodily fluids. So now that we know what they are, let's just imagine what would happen if they started falling from the sky in our lawns, roadways, parking lots, beaches, and more. Well, the people of Fairbanks, Alaska don't have to imagine, as in 2015, it actually happened. Over the span of about a week, the Alaskan Department of Fish and Game received several calls from the residents of the town claiming to have found the fish popping up in the most unlikely places. Now, Some people have claimed this was due to seagulls scooping them up from the fresh waters and dropping them on land, but like there were a lot. And besides, vampire fish rain sounds way cooler anyways. 
Kushtaka is next on our list, also known as the Land Otter Man. The creature, which many locals claim to have seen, is said to be a mythical shape-shifting being that is commonly been referred to in the legends told by the Tinglet peoples of the Pacific Northwest Coast on North America. In some of the legends told, Kushtakas are described as monsters, cruel creatures who drag sailors to their deaths. However, other stories have depicted them as friendly and helping, with some even claiming that the creatures have often saved humans by freezing to death in the cold Alaskan climate. So it's a bit of a toss up on this one. Are they good or are they bad? And are they even real? I'll leave that up to you guys to figure out. Coming up next, we have the Slide Cemetery, located in the Klondike Gold Rush National Park. It was a dark day when scientists discovered the graves of an estimated 48 to 100 people, it's unknown as the records weren't so great back then, who perished in what is now described as the darkest day in the Klondike Gold Rush history. On April 3rd of 1898, many Alaska people took to the Chilkoot Trail in an effort to quickly reach the Klondike Gold Fields, but unfortunately, a large number of them never made it to the intended destination. It seems the deceased filled with dreams of collecting riches failed to heed the many warnings of weather concerns in the area, and as the aspiring gold collectors made their way up the steep trails, the wet spring weather and loose dirt and rock caused a 10 acre avalanche ending the lives of many and turning what was once a booming gold town into a desolate and melancholy area of mourning. The cemetery stands today as a reminder of this dark day in history. Up next, we have Lady of the Lake, the discovery of which left scientists and historians baffled and disturbed. So if you're picturing some ghostly woman standing at the edge of the water with decrepit skin and strangly hair, whose presence is depicted in horror stories and folklore, well, you'd be wrong. The Lady of the Lake is actually an abandoned WB-29 bomber aircraft, tail number 4462214. The aircraft, which flew in the 1940s during World War II, was used to detect evidence of nuclear testing from the Soviet Union while flying back and forth between Alaska and Japan. Makes sense, but what doesn't is how the aircraft ended up in the lake. Its first confirmed appearance in its final watery resting place was in 1964, but whether or not it crashed there, which it does not appear to have done so, or if it was placed there, there are absolutely no records, so it just really remains a mystery. Next, we have the possible discovery of a supervolcano hiding just beneath the surface of the Alaskan Islands. The question of the volcano's existence first arose on December 7th of 2022, when John Power, a geophysicist at the United States Geological Survey's Alaska Volcano Observatory, presented a study that showcased a wide crater with arc-shaped ridges and around a 426 foot depth, 130 meter hollow entryway, presumably the tip of the supervolcano, and he presented it to his peers at the American Geophysical Union. While the discovery has yet to be confirmed, there is a mountain of evidence to support the existence of the mega underwater volcano. Geographical data as well as data collection from seismometers used to record micro earthquakes around the islands point heavily to the confirmation of the volcano's presence. At this point in time, scientists are determined to confirm what exactly lies beneath the surface of these waters around the Alaskan Islands as quickly as they can, because with the discovery of the possible volcano being so new, we have little to no information on whether or not this thing could blow at any time. And up next, we have another possible appearance and swift disappearance of underground pyramids hidden within the earth of the Alaskan Triangle. The discovery was made after a United States Senator Hale Boggs, along with his pilot, Nick Begich, were flying over a part of Alaska commonly referred to as the Alaskan Triangle, known for its strange energy and high disappearance rate. As you might have guessed, both Senator and pilot disappeared, but that's not even the weirdest part. A survey of the area took place in an attempt to locate the missing persons, but instead found evidence of a pyramid-shaped major underground structure. However, when they went back to confirm their discovery, it was as though the pyramid had completely disappeared. 
There are many theories about the commonly referred to dark pyramid, the most popular being that it is an alien pyramid, heavily guarded by the United States government, and some people even believing that the pyramid has special powers, such as the ability to generate enough electricity to power all of Canada. But what do you guys think it is? Let me know in the comments because I really love a good conspiracy theory. And starting off our top three, we have disappearances in the Alaskan Triangle, which of course was briefly mentioned in our last point, but let's dive a little bit deeper because since 1988, there has actually been a recorded total of 16 thousand disappearances in the area that lies between the lines of Anchorage, Jeannot, and, and Uxquivik. Of course, Bogs and Bigitch being among the missing. No one can figure out why this specific area has caused so much confusion and turmoil. Of course, there are many theories, the presence of the Dark Pyramid being one of them, rough terrain being another, and possible magnetic disturbances as well. But the crazy part is that it's not just planes that disappear when entering this particular triangle-shaped portion of Alaska. Reports of alleged kidnappings, getting lost in the woods, sudden vanishings, and being buried by snow are by in no means of short supply. Scientists still can't seem to figure out what it is about this specific area that makes planes and people act so out of whack. Next, we have the petroglyph rocks found amongst the shores of Wrangell, an island town in part of Alaska's Inside Passage. For those wondering, a petroglyph is basically just a picture carved into a stone used to represent stories and knowledge. And if you'd like to see one, well, Alaska's got a bunch. While scientists argue over the purpose of the rocks, they have agreed that they were most likely created anywhere from 8 to 10,000 years ago, most likely by the native peoples that resided there at the time. But seeing as the depiction carved into some of the massive stones very closely mirror images of crop circles and other alien symbols, along with the fact that even after thousands of years the markings still remain so deep within the rock, the theory of the petroglyph's occurrence being a result of extraterrestrial artwork can't be ruled out. Not to mention, Alaska is also home to a giant underground pyramid, I'm just saying. And coming in at our number one spot, we have the golden egg. Okay, this one is super cool to me because it was found in the ocean and I'm always on the lookout for new aquatic discoveries, which by the way, if you've seen any recently, please let me know in the comments. But anyways, the flesh-like golden egg was recently discovered in August 30th of 2023 and this thing is weird. Found in the depths of the Alaskan sea floor, marine scientists are absolutely stumped as to what this thing could be. But many have speculated that it is most likely the egg casing of a new unknown creature. On a live stream, one of the scientists noted that the egg had a hole in it, saying that meant something had either tried to get in or out. Another one of the marine spectators noted that when our collective knowledge can't identify it, it's something weird, adding what kind of animal could make an egg casing like that. The team of researchers was able to successfully collect the intriguing item from the seafloor and bring it to the surface, and have so far confirmed that the golden, flesh-like egg is in fact of biological origin, meaning it's not just some prop or piece of trash, but they have yet to truly identify the strange discovery. 